we are back and the Cavaliers haven't really been a team that I've uh, covered very extensively uh, throughout on this channel quite yet mostly be just because it hasn't been uh, basketball season yet and there's you know college football and the NFL starting back up a little bit uh, closer to when that happens uh, but the Cleveland Cavaliers did do something quite newsworthy yesterday uh, making quite the deal with the Utah Jazz uh, so the Cavaliers get Donovan Mitchell in exchange uh, for Lowry Markkinen, Colin Sexton, uh, rookie draft pick Ochai Agbaji, I probably butchered that name, whatever, uh, 2025, 2027, and 2029 first round picks, and 2026 and 2028 pick swaps, according to the ESPN.com article uh, by Woj. And this is obviously a huge deal for both teams involved, the Cavs uh, finally getting a real, you know, uh, veteran star to kind of uh, help push them to contendership in the East and the Utah Jazz get a lot of assets to start their rebuild. Uh, and like I just said, this is a lot for the Cavs to give up as a team. Um, you know, it, but it does signify that they feel like they are done uh, rebuilding. They're kind, they're entering F them picks mode. Uh, you, you've seen teams do this, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, hopefully, the Cav for the Cavs' sake, this ends up being a move that. Uh, works out for them because if it doesn't, then the Utah Jazz are going to be uh, basically holding their future uh, in, their, in in the Jazz hands, essentially. Uh, but this is the organization, again, having faith that the core that they have been assembling and that the rebuild that they've just been going through uh, has put the work in and that they're finally ready to start making moves to win now uh, as opposed to m moves that like help their future, which is AKA for we're going to lose a bunch now. Um, not losing a major piece of their core in this trade uh, is huge besides maybe Colin Sexton. Uh, but Colin Sexton's, his contract situation has been uh, precarious since last offseason. It didn't really look like he and the Cavs were uh, going to be, you know, they looked like didn't look like they were going to be in each other's careers uh, for very much longer anyway, especially if Darius Garland is going to be the bona fide uh, starting point guard. Colin Sexton's role in the team is a little bit nullified. Uh, I, uh, last year, you could really see that the Cavs needed somebody like Donovan Mitchell uh, to help push them from being a team where that, that they could um, do great things and get great, great teams and everything was going right. Uh, but obviously, as you saw, the second half of the season, they sputtered out. Uh, they couldn't get it done against either the Nets or the Hawks in the play-in tournament. Uh, they missed out on the playoffs, and they get that first-round pick that they use on Agbaji that is in this trade here. Uh, so I guess it's a good thing that that... Um, First round pick that they used for Karis LeVert was lottery protected. Uh, but again, now the Cavs are in a dangerous situation where uh, they, they better get the wins because they don't have a whole lot of first round picks in their future. But uh, they have a, de a really good uh, young core. And I think that's the, the crux of this whole thing is that this core is pretty young. You know, Kevin Love is there, but he's mostly coming in off the bench. You know, uh, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Darius Garland. You know, and now Donovan Mitchell. This is a core that could be stick around for the Cavs and be good for them uh, for years to come down the road. You know, uh, it's it's and also Okoro too. Uh, that's that's who I was trying to think of that I was leaving out. Isaac Okoro uh, on the defensive side of the ball. There, uh, this is a big deal for the Cavs. I think this is a honestly this is a good move for the Cavs because at this point, if they if they feel like their rebuild is over, uh, then they should be making moves that help make their team better. And I think after this trade, you can look at the Cavs roster and say, yes, they did uh, get better. Their starting five is now really good. Uh, some Obviously, with the losses of Lowry Markkinen, you know, he was, a, he was a fun player to watch, not going to lie. I, you know, wish him the best in Utah. Uh, but, and the same with Colin Sexton and Nagbaji. And I, you know, you, you, you don't want to, I don't wish, it, like, have ill wishes for those guys in Utah or anything. But the Cavs are mostly moving on to try to really, uh, push for contendership in the Eastern Conference, which is still stacked. This is not a move that uh, definitely like guarantees them a spot in the finals or anything. This is just something that uh, gets them to maybe, but you know, compete even more with teams like the Celtics, uh, like the Heat, like the Bucks, you know, and just kind of gets them uh, to a point where their roster has to actually be taken seriously. They're not just like uh, a plucky team that you can't sleep on anymore. This is a team that. You, you go and you, and you have to bring your A game against the Cavaliers now. That's that's the secret's out of the bag. And now they just have to keep going with it. Uh, please, uh, thank you all for watching. If you watch it this far, please leave a like and a subscribe. If you enjoyed the video and like to see more, let me know what you think about the Cavs' uh, chances this year and this trade in the comments down below. 
Thank you all again for watching, and I will see you with the next one.